Our judge for the Hound Group, Mr. Edmund Zook from Columbia, Missouri. Of course, Ed, Eddie, Eddie, as he's known in the dog sport, is a longtime beagle breeder, and he's owned two of the beagles who won Best in Show at Westminster. And let's head to our veteran ring announcer, Michael LaFay. The Afghan Hound has been a recognizable breed since approximately 4,000 B.C. As the hunting dog of the royal family, a swift sight hound, he pursued gazelles, snow leopards, and hare while following huntsmen on horseback. In this country, the Afghan Hound has enjoyed success in the show ring, lure coursing, obedience, and agility. This is Afghan Hound, number 12. Very nice, sir. Take her straight down and back about halfway, about to the purple, uh, purple logo sign. Okay. All righty. First thing that jumps out to me, I see Jason and Gail, face. and I'm sure people watching at home, there's a lot of hair there. It's a lot of coat. Sure, there's a lot of hair there, but it's a silky coat, so it's very easy to maintain and take care of. And, you know, mm -hmm. this breed was a hunting breed as well, and it's a sight hound, so it used its sight to hunt. Very stylish coat, too. That's what I would say. Look at that. That's beautiful. Place. Sure, sure. And, you know, they're, they're so well known for their classic free gait and right with on a the spring rampers. to their step. And with hit the handler's long legs, he can really move with that dog. Of course. Yeah, and it's, it's one of the most beautiful breeds to watch as they move. A descendant of the colonial Virginia hounds, the American English Coon Hound was developed to run fox by day and raccoon by night. The American English Coon Hound has the strength, grace, and attitude of a well-conditioned athlete. The breed is pleasant, alert, confident, and sociable with both humans and dogs, possessing a kind, houndy expression. This is American English Coon Hound, number seven. Yeah, Michael talking dogs, but cat-like feet, right? The straight legs, thick padded. That's kind of a signature for the standard. Well, those tight, those shapes of the feet, of course, uh, help the dog do the job it was originally bred to do. They are uh, people Stand. lovers and pleasers, loving and loyal, so sociable. Around. Kind of like my agent. <laughs> sure. Mm -hmm. The American Foxhound was developed to hunt fox and coyote over the rough terrain of North America. These hounds can hunt individually or in packs, differentiating them from English Foxhounds. They enjoy the company of both other dogs and humans and are jovial, if not clowning, in nature. This is American Foxhound, number eight. All right, Carly, clowning, that's okay. They're checking the, the bite. 1877, first year this breed entered, and of course, May 8th, the exact date, was the first ever Westminster show. And, you know, breeds that are still with us today, like this one, it's all because of the dedication of the preservation breeders who have for decades have kept these breeds healthy and sound. And here we see a great example being shown by Heather Buner, as Very you may nice recognize her, Trumpet's owner from last year. Right, big winner from last year. Trumpet best in show. Winston reserve in show. We'll see him a little later. The Oswalk hails from West Africa. This slender, tall, elegant sighthound hunted hare and antelope. He has also excelled as a companion to the desert roaming nomads. Tough, durable, and very fast. These dogs have a tremendous energy outdoors but remain calm indoors. This is Oswalk, number eight. And I, I think the public Halfway watching this breed at home, it's very unique. It's a very rare breed. They may not understand why it's built this way. It's a Gothic architecture type dog with long column-like legs, very square, and the muscling is sinewy. And we don't ask this breed to carry a lot of extra weight because in the, in the, nice the way they this. hunted, they could not have this extra weight on them. So that's right, why so this dog, to some of you, may look a little thin. He's in beautiful condition for the way this breed should be presented. The and gate, very elastic, as you can see. The Basenji is an ancient African hunting dog. He's only been found outside his native Africa since 1930. While known as a barkless dog, he is not mute. Fanciers find his chortles and yodels charming. The Basenji is intelligent and strong-willed with a mischievous sense of humor and requires an owner who shares those traits. This is Basenji, number eight. And of course, we see Zumi here tonight in the Hound Group at Westminster. 
But Zumi is also a service dog for her owner who suffers from epilepsy. So the fact that, you know, the dog is being used to help its owner with health issues is just a testament to what these dogs can do. And that shows the versatility of all these breeds. Just because they were pigeonholed into one particular job, Very they nice. can all do all everything. Around, and look how much this dog is helping. Good look. The easily recognizable Basset Hound is a long low scent hound of ancient French ancestry. He is persistent on the trail and has been used mostly on rabbits. His majestic head, long velvety ears, wrinkled brow and dark eyes lend him that soulful expression. His gentle nature makes him a great companion and family dog. This is Basset Hound, number seven. The Basset Hound, favorite dog of Shakespeare. So to bark or not to bark, that would be, <laughs> that, that would be the question. Yes, a bark of the park, a Basset Hound of the park, Shakespeare of the park. You know where I'm going with this. I got it. Walk in the park, dog in the park. Okay. <laughs> there you go. So Frankie is here being shown by Mike Stone, who has handled many top Bassets at through, Westminster. Through all the years, yes, absolutely. He... Um, and you know, we talk about, you all remember Trumpet from last year with the famous shake. This breed has a lot of similarities with the loose skin, the long ears, and that's the collect the scent. So when you saw Trumpet and we all fell in love with him last year, this is and this dog has a lot of the same hunting traits and, and attributes that are very important. The Beagle is a compact scent hound coming in two sizes, under 13 inches and between 13 and 15 inches. Whether baying at a fresh brown scent or on the lap of an adoring child, the Beagle's comical nature and hardiness make it an excellent family pet. This is 13-inch Beagle, number eight. And of course, as we mentioned earlier, it, uh, Edmund Zook is a breeder of beagles and co-owner of two Westminster Best in Show winners. So he'll be taking a special look. Maybe. Very keen eye on Very the, keen both eye. of these dogs about today. Down and back for me, she is from Chile. We talked about the international flavor. By the way, in the in the Queens Borough of Queens, more than 130 different languages are spoken here. People, let's we'll see how the dogs do hanging out here. International this is, flavor. This is Olivia, shown by Diego Garcia. He's a very well-known, successful professional handler in our sport. And we'll be seeing him later tonight All with the Doberman as well. Tomorrow. Tomorrow, correct. Got to handle myself on that one. That's right. <laughs> That's okay. Crowd favorite, you hear that? Yes. Beagles originated as trackers of rabbits and hare, bred to hunt in large packs. They are sturdy hunters with a keen sense of smell yeah, and serious movies, tracking so. abilities. This is 15-inch Beagle, number 22. Now, this Beagle has impressive vocal cords for louder noises, uh, more full, fuller, I should say, than most dogs. And I remember in a Paul McCartney interview, that, that song, A Day in the Life, he said that that song has a frequency that only dogs can hear. I'm sure this Ooh. dog could sing along. Well, maybe he danced the trail all the way when he followed something, <laughs> listening to the music as he went down the trail. You know, and this is another one of our scent hounds. So this, you know, the the vocal and the and the audio part of the dog is very important. And they, and they actually did make sounds so that you could follow them on the trail. So they have their own please? their own song that they dance to. That's right. That's <laughs> right. Nice Making music as McCartney does so well. The black and tan coon hound is an old scent hound descended from a careful combination of the fox hound and the bloodhound. A true American breed, these agile, powerful dogs are known for their mournful ball and their long ears. He is known as a specialist on raccoon, but does well hunting other game. This is black and tan coon hound, number eight. This is Remy being shown by Tiffany Skinner. He's a best in show winning black and tan coon hound, which is kind of rare. You don't see a lot of best in show winning black and tans although it's especially a lovely for a breed. female i mean right the, usually the males are the dominant in the breed ring and here's a, a female doing so well which is great to see you know remy likes to wrestle with her german short-haired pointer buddies she's she's a showgirl. she really is she's just beautiful and she we've seen her before she's um 
been in the ring before here. Very nice, ma'am. All the way around, please. The Bloodhound is an ancient breed, traced back over a thousand years. This gentle giant of a scent hound excelled as a hunting companion and is renowned for his keen sense of smell. <laughs> Today, the bloodhound tracking instinct is prized by law enforcement in seeking missing children, hikers, escaped criminals, and other lost people. This is Bloodhound, number 17. Well, as we see here, the bloodhound has taken a bow already, so maybe, crowd maybe he knows something we don't know already. Right. He's already bowing to the crowd, so this is great. Good start for the Bloodhound showing the tonight. Down, this Bloodhound named Boomer. You think we're in, right? We're in a tennis arena. Uh, uh, boom, boom, Boris Becker. Podium. You go back and Long Island native, the great quarterback, Boomer Esiason. It's a good name. Good bow. Crowd, his first crowd reaction that overpowered the others. And we've been talking about, you know, uh, Trumpet here. Last year at the 146th Westminster Kettle Club Dog Show, Trumpet the, the Bloodhound stole the show, one bested show. This year, Trumpet returned to New York and received a welcome befitting a true champion. Speaking of Trumpet, one of the stadiums here at the National Tennis Center is named after Louis Armstrong, the great trumpeter. He was a resident of Corona in Queens. Gail Miller Beister, Jason Hoke, got Chris Myers. Uh, you have both shown and judged dogs. Obviously, that's why we look forward to their analysis. It's interesting here, the first three groups that we're seeing tonight, they've produced the last three winners of Best in Show. Your thoughts uh, so far with the Hounds? Well, I think out of some of the ones we've seen already, there's a lot of international intrigue. We've seen two foreign dogs that bested some of our top dogs in this country. So we're already seeing some big heavy hitters coming from all over the world challenging our local dogs. I'm really excited to see the non-sporting group because the number one and number two non-sporting dogs are both going to be out there tonight. It's a very top competition. Really excited. Along with the international flavor, dogs from 49 states. Only North Dakota uh, doesn't have a dog in this show. Let's head back to our ring announcer, Michael LeFay. The Blue Tick Coon Hound is an athletic, compact, speedy, and well-muscled hound, all of which helps it in trailing and trailing coo hounds and other small game. The name comes from its small dark coat pattern covered in ticking and featuring black spots. In America, blue ticks were referred to as English coon hounds for many years. This is blue tick coon hound, number seven. About halfway down and back to the purple podium. And we, we talk about the coon hounds. We're gonna see quite a few coon hounds in here tonight. This dog is unique because it would scent on cold trails. And for those of you who don't know what that means, that's a trail that may be three or four days old. And so this well, dog was adapted just for that special technique. And uh, this, uh, the name of Good this job, blue tick around, coon hound, Big John. And John McEnroe, we're at Arthur Ashe Stadium here at the USTA Billie Jean King National Tennis Center. He's a native, of course, of Queens. The earliest depictions from the 12th century, the graceful Borzoi pursued a variety of game in its native Russia. Today, Borzoi participate in confirmation, coursing agility, obedience, and therapy activities. A calm demeanor and sensitive nature belie the powerful and courageous hunter dressed in a beautiful coat, which may be any color. This is Borzoi, number eight. Piper is the number one female. Halfway down All the back, systems, the purple podium. which means we have different ranking systems. But of course, as we watch her move, we're going to watch that beautiful profile. Yeah, and Gail, that's really important in this breed because we've seen some of these dogs that have flat, straight lines across their top lane. These are what we call S curves, so that there's a rise over the loin and a curve underneath, and it's very unique yeah, to a couple of the sighthounds we're going to see tonight. And that's what makes this breed and this particular dog so special. Very nice. All the way around, please. See that uh, effortless, kind of graceful movement on display. Yeah, just beautiful on the way around. A Cernetco del Etna is an ancient breed that has thrived in Sicily for thousands of years. A hunter of small mammals and fowl, the Cernetco is a hardy compact dog. 
A Chinecco has a strong independent temperament necessary for hunting, but is friendly and affectionate and can be a good family pet. This breed enjoys mental stimulation and excels at a variety of events such as hunting, agility, and coursing. This is Chernetko Deletna, number 11. About halfway and down the interesting thing you're going to see about our Chernetko is that we have another breed in here called the Pharaoh Hound. And you may think this is just a Pharaoh Hunter miniature, but it's not. A Chernetko is a much more moderate dog, more compact, and that's what really sets this breed apart. They're much more moderate than the Pharaoh Hound you're going to see. And kind of a matching set, Go right? Further. The pigment, the Let coat, stand, the nails, they all kind yeah, of... Yes, so it's all in harmony. Nice. All the way yeah. around, please. Kind of like you're matching shoes and tie. That's right. We try to get it together. <laughs> <laughs> You've been at this a while. A little bit. Developed in Germany two and a half centuries ago to hunt badger, the long, low body of the dachshund worked efficiently underground. This unique breed, breed comes in three varieties, long hair, smooth, and wire hair, in two sizes, standard and miniature. The long hair dachshund's glistening, longer coat gives them a defense against the elements, as well as an elegant appearance. This is long hair dachshund, number 11. And of course, Very there are three coat man. varieties of dachshund. This is, we know the long hair. We're going to see the other two coming up. And of course, the About differences in coat were podium. based on where the dogs were working, the environment. Yeah, and that's where we'll see a lot of the adaptations, depending on what terrain or where, where they were working, that we had hard coats, soft coats. It just depends. And you saw the call name. I'll have a bagel to go. We're in New York. <laughs> there you go. All the way around, please. And bagel, bag, bagel beat her father. Her, today. Oh, really? Yeah. They judged it earlier. Yep. That deserves so a So they were, they were battling it out. <laughs> Family issues. Good work. Considered the original dachshund, the smooth epitomizes the breed's type. No matter if it's a standard smooth or a miniature, it is easy to see the prominent forechest, long low body, and fluid movement that are breed hallmarks. This is smooth dachshund, right, number eight. Got it. Thank you. And this is another one of those breeds that appeared at the show in 1877, that purple podium, very first show, the Smooth Dachshund. And they can be stubborn and wonder why you're not on board with their plans, kind of like our producer. <laughs> I can't. Come I've on. Owned, I'm I've, not going to comment. <laughs> okay. my, my mic goes off. You'll understand. Yes. yes. I've owned Smooth Dachshunds, oh, yeah? and they are so smart. I just must, you know, all the Dachshund people will agree. Very nice. This is all the way such around, an intelligent please. breed. She's Here we have Billie her. Eilish going back to the end of the ring. The newest of the three dachshund varieties, the wire hair incorporates the rough coat of a terrier. The distinctive facial furnishings of a beard and a bushy eyebrows add even more expression to the classic dachshund head. This is wire hair dachshund, number 23. And Gail, you and I share a lot of similarities because I had wire hair dachshunds and my parents bred them as well. So yeah, this is one of the favorites of mine, the wire hair dachshunds. I just, they have a little different temperament between the three breed varieties and, and, I, and I think that's important. Podium. And that, you know, we talked about coat texture too. So there's a couple different differences between the three. And of course that long body is on purpose. There's a reason for that. Right, and they have the wraparound front, which is go. really important. They have the, the big fore chest, the keel. All righty, very nice. All the way around. And it was for going to ground and digging in the ground. So, they, you know, they use the short legs to dig and propel the dirt past them. The English Foxhound is an athletic, strong, and stocky hound with a keen sense of smell. They were bred for fox hunting in packs. Huntsmen following on horseback. Most English foxhounds today are still used in this traditional role. Stamina, a good nose, and determination continue to make him a prized companion in the field. This is English foxhound, number eight. Yeah, you notice the white tip of the tail. That helps the hunters, right? See the dogs in the thick brush? One of those. Yeah, they call it a flag. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. And, you know, this is the largest of the pack hounds, you know, and we talked about the different purposes. These dogs work together with other of their own breed, and they have to be amiable. And so that's it. It's, we've bred this great Go temperament in where they get along with other stand. dogs. So if you have multiple dogs in your house, this would be a great dog to consider. All righty. This so is Susie all the around, being handled by Katie Bern Bernadine, who was best junior handler at Westminster.
We hope you're enjoying live coverage from Arthur Ashe Stadium at the National Tennis Center. We're in New York, 17 through 18 remain. The Greyhound headed your way, among others, in a moment. The Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show is presented by Purina Pro Plan. Well, the toys are on the clock and they are small, mighty, plenty of personality, and always a crowd favorite and so popular in New York City. Hello everyone, I'm Jenny Taft. It is great to be with you for what promises to be an exciting and drama-filled evening. We are halfway through the Hound Group, after which it's the aforementioned crowd favorite, toy group and with the non-sporting and herding to follow we'll have four group winners when our first night comes to an end but I want to see some more dogs so let's send it back over to Chris Myers. Thank you very much Jenny it's nice to see you it's nice to be inside at Arthur Ashe Stadium back to our ring announcer Michael LaFay. Red is a rabbit and hare hunter in France his name translates into long low shaggy dog of the Vendée. This sweet-faced, long-eared dog with its mustache, beard, and profuse eyebrows suggests the look of a worldly but amiable Frenchman. The GBGB possess a great stamina, speed, and courage. They are intelligent, friendly pack dogs that get along well with other dogs. This is Grand Basset Griffon Vendéon, number seven. Uh, that's a good look. And you, you heard uh, that by the time you say the name, but GVGV made me think of the noted music club that was in the East Village here in New York, the CBGB, oh, where the Ramones and Blondie talking <laughs> heads were. But that's a different subject for a different time. That is. This is Colt, <laughs> who's actually won his national specialty last year. And almost certainly originated in the Middle East about 500 B.C. This speedy hunter accompanied the Romans throughout Europe and was used to course game. Powerful yet elegant and even tempered and loyal, the fun loving Greyhound is a rewarding companion. Very nice. This is Greyhound number 16. Down and back. You know, we were, we were talking about poetry earlier, and, and there's a great saying that they're swift as a ray of light, graceful as a swallow, and wise as Solomon. And, and I think as you watch that dog, those three characteristics are portrayed beautifully in this breed. Agreed. It's a very old go. breed. 
showed up at Westminster in 1877. Right. It was there Thank at the you. very All beginning. The around, They've had 13 Group 1 wins. Stir, that's the most right of this group, and stirred the crowd, as you can hear, as we can see. The Harrier was created in England as a medium-sized Harehound, with records dating back to the 13th century. Although not well known, this sturdy utilitarian packhound bred for stamina and endurance rather than outright speed. This is Harrier, number seven. Here we have Joker. He's apparently About gone halfway down and back from across the pond and got podium. one at cross, got best of opposite. And that's that's a great accomplishment too, because in England, Crufts is their Westminster. So for a dog to compete over there and then come back here and win, it it shows its true quality. Resem yep. Resembles a beagle a little bit when you look. Sure, they're, they're a fox hunting right, miniature. All the way around, so please. you know that's why you're seeing these similarities come through. He's very fit and looks like he's in great condition. Pro plan dog. The Ibethan Hound traced back to ancient Egypt, dating at least to the 3400 B.C. The dog depicted in hieroglyphics that guarded the tombs That's of the pharaohs is almost indistinguishable from today's Ibethan. Prized for its keen hunting ability, its primary quarry is rabbit. This is Ibethan Hound, number 19. Nice. And first I'm going to talk about the dog, and then I'm going to talk about the handler. This dog is so lithe and light. They actually hunt by springing, and they jump in high into the air hunting rabbit. And then we have the handler here. This is an owner handler, and this is so important to our sport. These are people that are coming competing with professionals. And um, Alexandria came here, and she's won the breed again, I believe. I think this is her second time. And circle around for me. So she's, she's, she's a credit to what you can be in this sport without any professional training, any extra practice. She works with her own dog, shows her own dog, and here she is for the second time. Driven by passion. This hound should possess the speed to catch a wolf and the strength to kill it. For households that can accommodate their needs, Irish wolfhounds typically make trustworthy and gentle companions. Very good. This is Irish wolfhound, number nine. This about is halfway down and back for me, back to the purple podium. And here, uh, Mr. Zook giving direction. He, uh, it, <laughs> having this large dog go about halfway down and back so he can watch the gate coming and going, of course. This is That's Ivan good. being handled by Ron Bickford, who is an and Emmy Sir Award Rockford, winning. Video producer, production. Oh, oh that's cool. The uh, tallest dog breed that can stand up to seven feet on its hind legs. As a loyal companion to the Vikings, the Norwegian Elkhound was originally used to hunt moose and other big game, which it still does in its native Norway. This hardy hunter did double duty as a guard dog for campsites and a herder of flocks. They were first imported to America at the turn of the 20th century. This is Norwegian Elkhound, number 10. Here we have Josie being shown by Michael Scott. Very successful handler at Westminster, has won the group and working in other groups. Here he has his uh, Norwegian Elkhound. Norway gifted President Hoover a Norwegian Elkhound as a thank you for the U.S. and their help in World War I. And circle around, sir. And going back, you see the handler has the dog under perfect control, perfect speed for that breed. The Otter Hound is an ancient breed, but it wasn't until the 19th century in England that it came into prominence, being used primarily as a pack dog to trail and kill otters. Of all the hounds, this is the only true water dog with a waterproof coat and webbed feet. This is Otter Hound, number 10. You know, and as we're talking about these dogs, we're describing certain traits you want to see, and this is all from the AKC standard that's written to describe how you're supposed to breed these dogs, and it's very important. So we talk about this oily coat that they have, and it's because they hunted in a lot of wet terrain. So they had to have a coat that propelled the water off them, otherwise they'd be cold and unable to hunt and sustain the people that they were hunting for. And Melody here is not just a show dog and a fabulous coat that would repel that water, but also is a blood donor for local dogs in her community. 
An another dog with unique giving back quality. Outstanding. Let's welcome in Jamie Little. You may have seen her on our Fox FS1 NASCAR coverage. Enjoy working with you there, Jamie. We weren't going to miss this no matter what. So it's nice to have you here once again live in New York. Thank you, Chris. There's no place I'd rather be. I'm literally on the show floor right now, the ring. All these beautiful dogs head to toe. How about Buddy Holly, the PBGV? He is a world-class show dog. Is literally shown in Australia, England, Ireland, and now just started the U.S. tour in January, hoping to win this group here. This little dog, but great place to be. Let's go back to Michael. All of my love, all of my kissing. You don't know what you've been the Buddy Holly boy, story, and thank you very much for that. Pibasse Griffon Vendéen, or PBGV, is a pack dog, a French hound breed with naturally rough, wiry coat and an outgoing, active, and independent personality. It is the shortest of the four Griffon Vendéen breeds, hence the petite, meaning small in his name. This is Petit Basse Griffon Vendéen, number seven. About halfway down and back. So the height's about, what, the about 13 podium. to 15 inch range, is it? Right, and yeah. so compared to the Grand, right. who yeah. we already saw, this is the petite version, right? But there are other differences in the sure, head shape and ears. The ear length, the leg right. length is different, so yeah. the, the Grand is a little more elongated everywhere. The, the large, dark nice eyes around, please, as well. Buddy's being handled by Janice Hayes, and you'll see the tail's are often wagging the entire time. Very happy, upbeat breed. The pharaoh hound is one of the oldest known domestic dogs. The many depictions on Egyptian temples and tombs dating back to 4400 BC prove the antiquity of these hounds. It is thought that the pharaoh hound was brought by Phoenicians to the Mediterranean islands of Malto and Gozo. This is pharaoh hound number 19. About halfway down and back. So, so we talked to about the Cherneco earlier, and this is the Pharaoh Hound. And as I said, you can see now that there's a big difference between the two breeds. And then you saw the Ibizan Hound, which is a much leggier dog compared to the Pharaoh Hound. So this this is what sets all these different breeds apart. And and it was about how they hunted and the way they were used to work. Smooth movement, an exceptional jumper. Very good, and all the way around, please. Maybe the Knicks could sign him for the NBA playoffs. And these are very agile dogs, so they can certainly okay. do well. They could go with great athletes. A hound of striking color that traditionally brings big game to bay or tree. The plot is an intelligent, alert, and confident dog. Noted for its stamina, endurance, agility, and determination, and aggressiveness when hunting, the powerful, well-muscled plot right. combines courage with an athletic ability. Loyal and eager to please, the plot is a bold and fearless hunter. This is Plot Hound, number 10. So when they say bold and fearless hunter, this is a dog that hunted bear. Wow. So they, they, they can do, they do raccoon now, but they hunted bear back in the day. And so they had to have a very tenacious Little temperament. Fur. There we go. They're a strong-willed dog. Very and circle athletic. circle right around, please. Very strong. And state dog, as you see, they're of the great state of North Carolina, Tar Heel State. The Portuguese Pedango Pequeno is the smallest of the Pedango family. A rustic breed, they are still used for hunting rabbits in their native Portugal. With regular exercise and early training, they make lively and intelligent companions and watchdogs. The Pedango Pequeno should be lo longer than tall and may come in two coat types, smooth and wire. <laughs> this is Portuguese Pedango Pequeno, number seven. Back, this podium. is an endearing little breed. You know, Chris, when we talk about these dogs and what, what the judge is doing, they examine the head, they examine the bite, they open the mouth to see that they have correct dentition because a lot of these hunting dogs had to have proper dentition. They, and we base this on a standard, and then the judge watches it walk down and back to see how true the legs move and if they're yeah, moving right in the right proper right. direction. Yeah, is it, I mean, do you do yourself a favor doing something out of the ordinary, or do you have to stay smooth? I mean, we know the standard is measured, but what about the movement? Why don't you answer that on the next one? It's dog? good if they yeah. present a good picture okay. to see. Something a little different. An American breed, the Red Bone Coonhound, has a strikingly beautiful solid red coat. He is a passionate, well-driven hunter that loves to please and has the intelligence stamina to excel in hunting, research, uh, rescue, field trials, or the show ring. 
The Red Bone is versatile, courageous hound that makes a wonderful companion. This is Red Bone Coonhound, number 15. This is another North Carolina dog named after Peter Redbone. So hence, hence the name. There it is. And, and again, uh, so showing any personality helps the cause. Well, you stage. do have to make sure the judge is able to watch the game. Right you don't want to do anything that is going to distract or take away from your two minutes that you have in front of the judge. This is your moment. On a big stage. The Rhodesian Ridgeback is a dog of formidable power, dedication, and courage. As a hunter, he descends from a variety of breeds crossed with a native ridge dog in southern Africa in the 1800s. The ridge of hair on the back is the identifying mark of this breed. This is Rhodesian Ridgeback, number seven. So, Chris, this dog had a unique job to do. So when you talk about a dog that was used to hunt lion, they didn't actually bring the lion down. So when you look at this breed, they have to be agile because they had to be able to hold the lion at bay without being harmed by the lion. So you'll notice you know, a more elegant type movement because they had to be a little more life than some of the other hounds. It's quite a challenge. And right on around them. <laughs> I wouldn't want to take it on. I'd get a ridge back. I mean, these dogs, yeah, they, they, they hold off bears and lions. And, oh, my. I knew that was coming. Yeah, <laughs> sorry. I fell into that. The Saluki's elegance is deceptive. For millennia, Salukis have hunted in some of the world's most inhospitable regions. Their movement, whether in the show ring or in the coursing field, is the result of a supremely conditioned coursing hound. This is Saluki, number 11. Got it. New in York's favorite Saluki, by the way, Walt Frazier, the great. Got him back uh, for me, please? Today, the 53rd anniversary of the Knicks' first championship. And the Saluki, this may be a good sign in New York. <laughs> Let's hope. Know. And then Stewart's hoping that he has a good night as well, right? Being handled by Julie Mueller. It's a certified therapy dog. I love seeing that and being able to talk about how our, Very nice. how our show way. dogs are also helping their communities. Good, I'll see him after the show. A Scottish Deerhound is a rare breed of ancient lineage and is the royal dog of Scotland. Sir Walter Scott called them the most beautiful creatures of heaven. Shown here at Westminster since the very first show in 1877, they are dignified and gentle in temperament. They are large, rough-coated sighthounds bred to pursue game. This is Scottish Deerhound, number 15. About halfway down and back for me, please. Here we have Sterling being shown by Whitney, Whitney Meeks. Excuse me. And, it, you know, some people might mistake this for an Irish, Irish wolfhound, but there's many differences. Sure. You know, they're much more greyhound-like in their appearance, and they, you know, they have the graceful curves. But un, unlike, say, the, the wolfhound, they don't, they don't, or the greyhound, Very they nice. don't stoop around, to do their work because they were killing bigger game. So they, they didn't have to bend down as much as a greyhound. That's why their necks aren't quite as long as a greyhound. And that's the subtle differences you're going to see between these breeds. The Salugi is a rare breed from Sighthound from North Africa, known for its hunting skills, speed, agility, and endurance over long distances. This is an ancient breed, rich in history and culture, and is equally at home in nomadic tents as in the hunt. This is a short-coated breed, is primarily a companion breed in the United States that is also proficient at lure coursing. This is Salugi, number 11. And the Slugi breed became AKC recognized just in 2017, but they're a very ancient breed. And this actually is the first best in show winning Slugi in history. So kudos to the breeders that brought this okay. dog over. Very nice. I mean, Not look how rampers. great it's showing. I mean, this is this is a true testament to the temperament of these dogs. First entered in 2017, the Slugi. The energetic treeing walker coonhound is perfectly suited for tracking and treeing coon hounds. Developed from the walker, the Virginia hounds, and the earliest English fox hounds, the treeing walker is a fast alert hunter with superb endurance. The breed is intelligent and con confident, sociable, and a loving family member. This is treeing walker coonhound, number 11. 
about halfway down. So this tree walker, you know, we now that you've seen a lot of the different coon hounds, this is called the people's choice dog because this dog had the most versatile of all the coon hound temperaments. Whereas some dogs were kind of pigeonholed into one job, this this dog was the most versatile in the hunt. And all the way around, they have different kinds of barks to uh, let the owner know. Sure, and that's their signal, you know, so you know whether they're on trail or actually are holding something at bay. The Wibbit looks similar to a Greyhound, but is smaller and is a distinct breed. For over a century, this extremely fast sight on has been used as a rabbit courser and a racing dog in England. The Whippet's stamina and power of acceleration are truly striking. This is Whippet, number 16. And here's another one of those graceful S-curve breeds. Just, just a beautiful outline, cut so clean. And you might recognize Lori. She won the group here years ago with a bitch called Chanel. Lovely, lovely, lovely breed. I actually have two at home, so oh, I, I'm partial to Whippets. I'm a, I'm a fan of Whippets. I have, a, I have Stewie, the 14-year-old, and Winston, the 3-year-old. Wow. Both I'm little sorry. devils. I'm so glad you gave them a shout-out. Yeah, I have to. They would be so mad if you... Had not done that. Yeah, these are great frisbee dogs. Hopefully, they're watching. Jason Hoke, Ale Miller, Beicher, Chris Myers were live at the National Tennis Center, and rounding out our first of four groups tonight, the Hound Group. And there's our judge, Edmund Zook. Now he may be making a selection next. Taking another look at the side. And he can Both call sides. out any, any number, right? correct? That's right. Five, it's usually seven. around eight dogs okay. that they'll pull. This is a large group, though, and a lot of beautiful, incredible dogs in here. And what a variety. Sizes. Sir, can I have the Afghan hound, please? All right. That was our opener. That's the opener, and he's going to tell them exactly where he wants him. Now he's going to pull out the next, and so the next handler will know where to go, how to follow in line. Sir, would you take your half or boys right there, chop with the half in? Which box on? Then we have Reese here. Oh, that's wonderful. Good for her. A higher hand. There we go. Sure. A blood donor. Buddy Holly's out there. All right. So we'll get that. That. Great story of Buddy Holly that Jimmy Little was telling us about. In the final of the final in this group. He's got a lot of beautiful dogs to select. You guys are going to end up taking them one at a time. You're going to watch for my signal. End up back where you are, please, but just a little further back. All right? One at a time, watch for the signal. You have judged, both of you, so he's looking for something else, determining... Yeah, so we're going to see the side gate right now, and, and it really sets the, the group apart from other breeds because this breed has a light, lofty gate. You know, you're going to see the Borzoi keeping its beautiful S-curve shapes going around. You're going to see a strong gate of the Foxhound when he comes up. That Borzoi is floating. It's beautiful. Oh, sounds like the English fox sounds a favorite. The workman like fox sound moving out beautifully. The Albizum. They like that breeder on her handler. Yeah, right? she's just doing a great job tonight. A tousled otter hound. And the Petit Basse. There's Buddy Holly. <laughs> Always a crowd favorite. Always. Yeah, that's going to be tough to beat. And the Pharaoh Hound, such a beautiful dog. Free and true and sound. Not missing a beat tonight. And now the light, light footed Lofty Saluki. Lofty Saluki, yes. Eddie did a beautiful job. And let's see who, who he picks now. Yeah. 
Hey, would you bring the PBGV up here, please? Buddy Hall is coming up to the front. This could be... Right about here for me, please. I'd like to thank you all for this beautiful group. It was humbling to be out here with all these great dogs. This is my garden group tonight. The PBGV is first, the Afghan is second, the Boys are third, and the English Fox on his fourth. Wow. Buddy Holly takes it all. An international dog, that international intrigue's coming through. Singing a good tune tonight. Remember, Trumpet was the winner for Best in Show last year, coming from the Hound Group. Seven Best in Show winners have come from this group. But the Buddy Holly story continues. And a little dog and a big group of hounds. I love that everybody's coming in and congratulating the winner. That just shows the community is so tight. We just really want to support each other, even at this level of competition. Yeah, and it's such a thrilling win for Janice. And she, I'm sure she's just thrilled to give everybody a big hug and move on to best in show tomorrow. The first of the seven groups. Let's check in with Jamie Little. What a popular win. Jan is getting hugs and all around high fives, handshakes. Janice, when I talked with you earlier and you told me about Buddy Holly and how special this dog is, what made him stand out from the rest tonight? He's just special. He's just one of those dogs. He has the it factor type movement. He's just a PBGB through and through. Well, he's shown all over the world. Now he's here in America making his statement. Hey, we'll see you tomorrow night. Thank you very much. All right, Jenny. Well, we have our first winner of the night, the Petit Basse Griffon Vendéen, representing the Hound Group, the 147th Westminster Kennel Club Dog Show. We'll be right back after the break.